Welcome to another devlog. In this video, I'm gonna show you an enemy spawner system and an enemy waves lockdown system. Super cool, right? Super energetic start of the video. Because the retention of my latest devlog was a bit low, people click away. The, the, the videos are too boring. <laughs> so that's that's why all the energy. Uh, are, are, you still, are you still here? Don't click away, please. Another thing that needed a bit more energy and to be less boring is my game. My game, Aiden Jr. So I've worked on a few things to enrich, to uh, improve the gameplay a bit. An enemy spawning sister. <laughs> enemy spawning sister. <laughs> yes, an enemy lockdown system. Whenever you enter a certain area, there will be like an invisible wall and you won't be able to continue unless you kill an X amount of enemies. And I wanted to make it so that I gradually add enemies to that area. So therefore I created a spawner as well. Let me just show you instead of talking about it. Uh, this is a very insightful video. You're gonna learn a thing or two, but it's not necessarily a tutorial. And with that out of the way, let's go. All right, this should look somewhat familiar. Uh, I've created those little plus icon thingies that you see right over here. Those are enemy spawners. I can add a enemy scene to the spawner. So the spawner know what type of enemy it will be spawning. Um, I can put it on spawn on proximity. So whenever you get close to the spawner, it starts to spawn uh, enemies. Let me just put it to two meters. Um, I can put a certain amount of enemies that it should spawn, in this case five. I'm gonna ignore this one for now. It has something to do with the wave system. And an interval, let me just spawn an enemy every one and a half second. And I can also make the enemy jump from the spawner. So it can jump from behind a rock or from the water, or I can do all sorts of uh, cool stuff with it by just changing the marker's location a bit, just like that. And now it will just get launched from the spawner into the direction of the marker. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, no, let me just show you. Let me put on the headphone because I'm pretty sure I've added some uh, temporarily audio to the game. The bird should be tweeting. Yes. So cute. Uh, the spawner should be somewhere here, but I disable the uh, sprite's visibility. But whenever I get close, it starts to spawn. Isn't it cool? Oh, that's, oh, by the way, did you see that? Yeah, that was that went kind of fast. Let me show you the, uh, the crab variant. I'm gonna move the spawner a bit and um, put the crab right over here. Super cozy in the middle of the birdos. I didn't really align the uh, the sprites too well, so it, it, it looks a bit off, but that's I will fix that later on. But the enemy is basically immortal uh, until you break the shell. So whenever I hit it, only the shell will flash wide briefly. And it takes two hits for the shell to break. And now the enemy is uh, vulnerable again and you can uh, ragdoll it around. So yeah, just a little variant. Um, those shell type uh, crabs are not particularly stronger, Not way stronger but it makes you approach the enemy slightly differently because you first have to destroy the shell before you can stagger it and, and kill it i'm also experimenting again with the uh, somewhat blurred foreground and background i think it adds like focus to the main part of the game i'm probably gonna keep it not sure yet all right next the most awesome part of this video in the middle of the level where the palm trees are at there's this big area 3d object uh, whenever you enter it there will be a collision shape added at the very end of the shape, which makes you unable to uh, get uh, past, but basically it's a barrier. It's a invisible wall. Uh, you need to kill an X amount of enemies before the barrier gets uh, removed from the, from the level again. And then the camera will zoom in uh, again to the character. And then you can uh, continue uh, progressing the level. It's basically a way for me to have certain points in the level uh, with a wave system of enemies. And these enemy lockdown systems will create cool gameplay. And they will also make it so that the levels take a bit longer to complete. You know, whenever you have an enemy wave of like 20 enemies, um, it can easily take about a few minutes to complete that uh, wave of enemies. Without this lockdown system, I should probably make the level two or three times bigger to achieve the same amount of playtime per level, which requires so much more level design, 3D modeling, uh, probably also a story. And there are multiple things that I can do with it. You can imagine that, let's say we have a uh, villager, a um, fellow 
turtle villager that's being attacked by two crabs just like this um and whenever you enter this area you have to defeat those two enemies that are already in the world in this way we have a lockdown system without the enemy spawners but we can also have spawners in the lockdown and that's going to be super fun you're you're going to feel like you are part of a interactive cutscene. something is going on and you have to save a villager and those all have like uh, unique animations to them Maybe the turtle is using a broomstick to, uh, you know, uh, push away the crabs or something in that line. That's, that's going to be super cool. So in this example, we have pre-existing enemies in the lockdown uh, area, but we can also have spawners as children of the lockdown node. Spawner one, two, and three. This spawner has the marker 3D in an angle, so they're going to get launched from the water on the stage. And these spawners are in the cornfield or the weed fields, and the enemies will just walk from it. The front spawner has the spawn on proximity checkbox enabled. It will only start spawning whenever you enter the uh, area 3D node. The two spawners in the background, they have the uh, spawn on proximity uh, disabled, which make it so that it will start spawning whenever there are five enemies left to kill. And the right one will start spawning whenever there are four enemies left in the lockdown area. In this way, I control the total amount of enemies to spawn in these areas. I control the interval between the spawning and also the threshold from which moment uh, the spawner should start spawning, depending on the total amount of enemies left to kill. The first spawner holds two enemies, the second one two as well, so that makes four. The front one uh, has three, so that makes seven. And then there are two already in the world, so that makes nine enemies in total. So whenever I play the game and I enter the area, so whenever you hit the area, there's going to be this wall. The camera zooms out. The graphics are not final yet, but it makes it clear that you shall not pass. Let me destroy the shield. And I think it was around five and four, right? So let's kill a few more. One should spawn right now. Yep, there you go. And the other one will start spawning right now. Yes, there you go. So in this way, we control this whole wave system. Let's try not to die. It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> the combat system is still super rough. It's sometimes hard to, uh, you know, go about the depth perce perception. Right, so whenever you kill all the enemies, the camera zooms in to the character again and the wall uh, gets removed and then you can proceed. Whee! Bloom! Awesome! Without going into too much detail, it was quite interesting to program this whole thing. First time uh, getting all these spawner children that are in the Area 3D uh, node. Uh, I'm counting all the enemies that are yet to be spawned in the future. And I'm also counting all the enemies that are on screen the moment you are entering the area. And with that, I have this variable called enemies to kill. There's a lockdown wall that's going to be um, placed at the very end of the uh, area 3D node. I will be listening to all these signals from the enemies whenever they die so I can subtract the uh, enemy to kill uh, variable. I've got this auto loaded UI control so I can set the amounts of enemies to kill uh, in the big text field uh, in the center of the screen. I still need to create actual graphics for it, obviously. And with the enemy spawner node, it's very important that it knows whether it's part of the uh, lockdown area or just a random spawner in the world, because based on that, it's going to act differently with the uh, proximity checkbox enabled. I've learned a lot about signals the last couple of weeks, how you can use them to control and set the UI, for example, in a very controlled way with those auto-loaded files. We always end those dev logs by breaking the game and do something stupid. So let's um, get a spawner duplicated. I'm going to move it out of the lockdown system and I'm going to put it in the background right over here. Let's put two and this one's going to shoot 40 this one's also gonna shoot 40 it's on proximity and the interval is gonna be dot one so it's pretty much a machine gun 
of crabs that will launch into the world. I'm not sure if the launching goes well now. It's going to shoot the enemies in this angle. I've never launched them from this far away. Let's see if it works. No! All right. Let me... <laughs> this is... <laughs> it looks so fun already. Uh, let me put this one here. Will this work? Yes! <laughs> Looks so cool. No! All right, this is the ultimate challenge. Oh, whenever I hit the lockdown area, it says 71. The frame rate is still okay-ish. Like, oh man, this is so difficult. No! There's no way I'm gonna make it. Ow! Only one heart left. It's a permadeath video. The moment I die, I end the video. All right. <laughs> 54, 54 to go. What are they doing? <laughs> They're all gathering at the house. One more hit. No! Oh! That's it. I died it. <laughs> and now they're feasting on my body. We need this Resident Evil overlay. Like, you died. You're getting eaten by crabs. <laughs> That's it for the video. I hope you liked it. If so, uh, press like, uh, subscribe, say something nice in the comment section. And I see you guys around in the next video. Ur, stream. Bye-bye.